All right, I want to talk about the 10 most exciting players from the USFL draft. This would be 2022's USFL draft, which was last week. I got to spend both days covering this event, and I got to talk with all of the quarterbacks. I got to talk with most of the coaches. I'm really excited about this draft class, this draft pool. Just to recap, there were 35 rounds, right? And there were rounds in which you could draft positions. So, for instance, an outside linebacker going in the 29th round went there because that's when you could draft an outside linebacker, not because he's a 29th round selection, right? Also, the same thing is true with quarterbacks. We had a first round of quarterbacks, and we have 12th round for quarterbacks, right? So I want to point that out as we go through this. 280 players selected for the eight teams. There will be a supplemental draft on March 10th. We will have a combine for tryouts of a sort, March 19th, 20th. Training camp will begin March 21st, and that's going to take us into the kickoff of the regular season on April 16th. And then we're going to take it into the 4th of July weekend where we will crown the 2022 inaugural USFL champion. I'm excited about that. This is a very cool league. You know me, right? I'm about football. I love watching people play football. You're not going to get to me by telling me that we need to play less football. The USFL is going to give us 10 weeks plus four weeks of postseason play for football. I don't know how you're not excited about that, all right? And we're playing in the largest college football market in America, Birmingham, at Protective Stadium, which, by the way, is immaculate. It was gorgeous. I'm so into this, all right? And when you look at some of these players that have been selected, you're going to be into this too. All right, so let's start with the first player on this list for me. It is former Michigan quarterback Shea Patterson. Now, one of the things that I found really interesting about Shea Patterson and all of this and needs to be pointed out off the top, he's the number one overall pick, okay? That means something. I don't care who you are. To be the number one overall pick, even if you're playing pickup basketball, is something you carry with you. When they put it and write it down on a draft card and then you get to be that dude putting on that hat at that podium selected by Jeff Fisher to represent the Michigan Panthers, yeah, it's going to mean something, and for good reason. In 2016, he was a five-star recruit. He was the number four overall player in that recruiting class. Started out his career at Ole Miss before really having a landmark transfer that set the set in motion what would become, I think, the transfer portal, understanding what it means to want to transfer and play right away. But when he got to Michigan, he was pretty good, man. After starting games at Ole Miss and Michigan, all Big Ten honors twice as the starting quarterback at Michigan. Averaged the most passing yards by a Michigan quarterback ever. He passed Tom Brady in his final game against Ohio State for career passing yards and then passed his head coach, Jim Harbaugh, for career passing yards in the Citrus Bowl before ending his career at Michigan. He's still under contract for baseball, by the way. Like The Texas Rangers drafted him in 20, what is this, 2018? Yeah, we signed him to a $25,000 signing bonus that's in place until 2024 if he ever wants to start to play. But he's always been about football. He's done some time with the Kansas City Chiefs, really getting to experience mini camp, training camp with uh, Patrick Mahomes and others. I'm excited to see what he looks like. He's also going to be paired with another quarterback we'll talk about here in just a minute at number two, Paxton Lynch. Okay, now Paxton Lynch. <laughs> Getting into this draft, I did not expect, all right? Many of you remember that Paxton Lynch was a number one overall pick in the NFL draft in 2016 after putting together what was a really outstanding career at Memphis. He left Memphis with the school record for total offense with just over 4,000 yards and has since been broken by another quarterback, Riley Ferguson, in 2017. But in a game against Memphis, he set uh, or tied an FBS record for passing touchdowns in a half with seven against Southern Methodist. Uh, he was 9 of 14 for 222, in case you wonder, and every TD was to a different receiver. He's coming out. He's six foot seven, 244. Didn't work out with Denver. He had just ended his career at CFL when he got drafted with the last pick available for quarterbacks by the Michigan Panthers. I'm excited to see what that quarterback derby looks like between Shea Patterson and Paxton Lynch as Jeff Fisher tries to figure out which one of those guys starts for him day one. Okay, at the number three spot drafted by the Tampa Bay Bandits is Florida, Florida, former Florida State 
Auburn and Florida Atlantic player John Franklin III. This, again, was really just an inspired choice for me. Some of you got to know John Franklin III on the Netflix series Last Chance You. I watched it all the way through. I've watched every season of Last Chance You for football. I could care less about the other sports because I'm a football fan. But this is a guy that really has an interesting story and I believe is the only dude playing in this league that won a BCS National Championship and a Super Bowl. Because you'll remember, he was on that 2020 team that won the Super Bowl with Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, it's a guy that really has an opportunity to make an NFL roster should he choose to do so in the coming training camp series. He started out as a scout team guy when Jameis Winston was doing what he was doing with Florida State. Has since gone to East uh, Mississippi Community College, worked his way all the way to the USFL. I'm excited to see what he does with Jordan Tamu as a quarterback. I, we're going to see that SEC connection once again, but talking about a guy that absolutely is great in the pocket and is going to have a speedster with 4-4 four, four flat speed and John Franklin the third running down the sideline. Number four, I mentioned him just a moment ago, Tampa Bay Bandits quarterback Jordan Tamu, who really came on to replace Shea Patterson at Ole Miss. This is really serendipitous, and the storylines are just coming out of my ears here, man, because Shea Patterson gets injured 2017. Jordan Tamu comes in to relieve him and puts up better numbers on the whole, right, than Shea Patterson did in that season. He averaged a full yard better per pass attempt. He had a higher passer rating. He had a better TD to INT ratio, and he finished with a higher completion percentage. Patterson goes to transfer to Michigan, and Jordan Tamu becomes the starting quarterback at Ole Miss. He's exciting. He's great with his mobility. He was second in the SEC in passing behind Tua Tonga Valoa in 2018, even as the Rebels weren't all that great in uh, Matt Luke's last season as head coach at the University of Mississippi. But I'm interested to see what it looks like for those guys to finally get to play against each other after having been teammates not just at Ole Miss, but also Kansas City, because when Shea was there, so was Jordan Tamu. You also remember that Jordan Tamu played in the XFL for the St. Louis Battlehawks and was really, outside of guys like P.J. Walker, everybody's favorite as he came on. He got to play a little bit later. This time, I think he's going to come out the box as Todd Haley's number one quarterback. We'll see, because there's another guy there that he might have to contend with in Brady White, who bun uh, broke a bunch of packs and Lynch's records. Like I said, there's just a ton of storylines in this league, and I'm excited about it. Okay, number five. It's a guy you don't know, but you're going to get to know very well. It's Brian Scott. He is the quarterback, number three overall pick for the Philadelphia Stars. And I haven't checked with research on this, but I need to because I believe he's the highest drafted Division three quarterback of all time. Number three overall in any pro draft. He's coming out of Occidental College where he set all sorts of records and let it was – their best player for three-plus years. is a guy who was a late bloomer, quite honestly, right? Grew a full foot in high school. Led his team to a conference title for the first time in 49 years in high school. Ends up at Occidental because he went to one camp and was seen, right? He had opportunities to leave there, but it's a great school. He wanted to finish. He got invited to training camp 2017, Sean McVay's first season as head coach of the Los Angeles Rams. And... This is a man who had Cooper Cup singing his praises. Talk about that dude over there can sling it. So I'm interested to see what he looks like in this league, especially as he's got some real credentials, right? I mean, he won a gold medal in the International Football American Football Federation's World Cup, U19 starting quarterback. He also is a spring league MVP. This is the guy that right now, among all these other dudes that I would bet on to have an outstanding season in the USFL. He's also going to be partnered with Bart Andrews, who was his coach in the Spring League, and quite frankly, Coach Steve McNair at Tennessee. Like, what else do you need there? Okay, at number six on this list, a guy that is very familiar to many, but I'm excited to see as a New Jersey general, that is Mike Weber, Ohio State running back who rushed for 1,096 yards as a spellback 2016. I wonder who was the uh, starting running back that he was playing behind then. Might be a guy by the name of Zeke Elliott. He also went in the 
seventh round to uh, the Cowboys, I believe, and was right, really outstanding at the Combine. 447, 40 yard dash, 2019 NFL Combine. Uh, has bounced around, but ended up with the Kansas City Chiefs, where he also won a Super Bowl ring as a member of their practice squad in 2019. I think for those of y'all that just need a comp here, and I should have been doing these comps all along, is Clyde Edwards-Alaire at tailback. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and reference those so you have an idea of what we're looking at. Brian Scott, Aaron Rodgers, that was his nickname in college, D3 Aaron Rodgers. John Franklin III, I think you're talking about John Ross, really, an outstanding speedy receiver. Uh, with Paxton Lynch, I mean, goodness me, dude. You're talking about an entirely too big quarterback with a lightning arm. Drew Bledsoe comes to mind for me. Those of y'all that can reach all that way back. And Shea Patterson, I think, has the opportunity to be a Russell Wilson type of player. He's really great with his feet. He's a great leader. He's excited to be a Panther. And there's a reason why he's your franchise player if you are the Michigan Panthers. Okay, the number seven player on this list for me is a guy I think many college football officiados know in Philip Scooby Wright, inside linebacker for the Birmingham Stallions, played his college football at Arizona. His 2014 season is among the best ever by a defensive player, full stop. 2014, he was a unanimous All-American. He won the Bronco Nagurski and the Chuck Bednarik Award, which are given to the nation's best defensive player. He also won the Lombardi Award, which is given to the player that best embodies the NFL legendary head coach Vince Lombardi. And he finished ninth in the Heisman voting because this season was ridiculous. Check that out the stat line, 2014. 164 total tackles, 31 tackles for loss, 15 sacks, 5 forced fumbles. That's ridiculous, right? For me, the comp is Luke Keekley, right? He That was of the Carolina Panthers, but just a tackling machine, right? A guy that's going to put everybody on the ground he puts his hands on. 2015, he suffered a season-ending injury. He fell in the draft, and he is working his way back to, I think, the NFL. But I'm excited to see him in the, in the USFL. Sneaky pick for the best defensive player in this draft class. I'm excited to see what Scooby Wright can do. Number eight on this list. A guy, again, you probably have not heard of, but one you're going to get to know quick, fast, in a hurry. It's Jordan Moore. He's outside linebacker for the Philadelphia Stars. University of Texas, San Antonio is where he finished his career. But just quickly. He won the indoor and outdoor hurdles in the Big 12 at Texas Christian. 60 meters, 110 meter hurdles. Transfers to LSU, does the same thing. Wins the 60 and the 110 meter hurdles in the SEC, right? But still loves football so much that he grad transfers to play for Frank Wilson at UTSA. He's six foot three, he's 227 pounds, and he's still got his 4'4 speed. That's amazing. And that's going to be a dude playing outside linebacker playing in the second level for the Stars. Excited to see what he can do. I think the NFL comp for him is Jamal Adams. Then at number nine, a guy that Oklahoma fans will remember, Jeff Bidette, drafted by the Michigan Panthers, so he's going to catch passes from Paxton Lynch and or Shea Patterson. Ran 4-2-7 at his Pro Day event a few years back. Has been with three NFL teams since then. Also played in the XFL for Bob Stoops and was one of the guys that Gerald Johnston had zeroed in when he was the director player personnel there. And then at number 10, also, excuse me, before I get to number 10, Deshaun Jackson is the comp for Jeff Bidette. Then at number 10, it's Brennan Eagles, Philadelphia Stars. He, of late, of Texas, enormous wingspan, six foot four, 230 pounds, averages 16.8 yards per catch at Texas, goes undrafted, is trying to get back to the NFL. I think the comp here is T. Higgins. They have the same sort of speed, the same sort of wingspan. I think they have a I think he has a tremendous opportunity here playing with a guy like Brian Scott who's going to give you opportunities to make plays down the field. So those are the 10 players that I am most excited about who were drafted in this inaugural 2022 USFL draft. This is not a one-off, by the way. Uh, We're going to talk a bunch of USFL here on the number one ranked show. I'm excited about it. It was in Birmingham last week to cover the draft because you remember I did the show from a hotel room before we could even talk about what this draft looked like, plenty of notes, lots of reporting. I'm really interested in how this story evolves, getting to know these players, getting to know these coaches. And as I told Mitch Johnson, I'm going to tell you, we're doing a coaches series. So you're going to get to hear from all eight of these coaches in the USFL individually. We're going to talk to them at length. We're going to talk about their past careers. We're going to talk about what brought them to the USFL. We're going to talk about their players. 
Hopefully, they'll give up some game. You know, maybe we'll talk a little game planning. But I expect to have a really good time with this. And I hope that you have a good time with this. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment on the YouTube channel. Leave a review on the podcast. Let us know what you want to know from each one of these coaches as we begin to talk with them. And we will get that up for you in a couple of weeks. And yeah, we'll talk about college football from time to time here on the number one ranked show. I'm excited about spring football. Like 30 players that I have talked to individually that I really want to talk with you about. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.